everyone, it's Anya, and today I want to talk about how to write romance if you've never been in love. Now this video will be specifically focused on YA because that's mostly what I write and have experience with, and I think oftentimes there's this conception that romance is a frequent part or even an expected part of YA. I don't think it's always necessary, but I do like a good romantic subplot, and sometimes I found myself wanting to write them in my own books. but. The problem is, I've never been in love, and in fact, I don't think I've ever been on a date before this year, and so I obviously have very little real life experience with this kind of thing. So it's all very well if you have been in love and you can just sort of imagine that emotion and convey it right on the page, um, but for people like me who've never been in love but still want to write romance, I think it's still really really possible, and I think the first thing you have to think about in order to accomplish that is sort of figuring out what the conventions of romance are in YA and how you can convey those even if you don't have the sort of personal lived experience of love that you know might be ideal to have. So the first sort of set of conventions that I've identified is those of attraction and I think this is often, not always, but often one of the first steps in a love story is the attraction between these different characters, whether it's your main character with another person or two side characters. So there are loads of stereotypes here, like the fluttery stomach feelings, the blushing face feelings, um, all sorts of feelings, 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 not to mention being hyper aware of the other person's appearance or if they ever touch you. And importantly, there are loads of examples in books. And so I actually just picked up the book that I happen to be reading right now, which is With the Fire on High by Elizabeth Acevedo. And just look for examples of romance in there because there is a romantic plot line in that book. And so I opened up this book and boom, right? Right, right there. At the sight of his dimples, I almost melt. So here you have two points of what I was just talking about, a focus on the person's appearance and sort of internal feelings of the narrator as she's attracted to him. This sort of attraction is conveyed just as much in actions as sensation. So for example, um, forgetting how to talk or like pretending to be cool. Uh, in With the Fire on High, something like I stumble over my own feet after the love interest smiles. And of course, I'm sure you all know this from middle school, um, but it can also be counterintuitive. So Acevedo writes, this boy would be in this damn class with me and I don't know why it annoys me so much. Uh, basically, these sort of counterintuitive feelings that can be some of the early signs of attraction to somebody. And now as I was writing up this, this script, I got kind of curious and so I googled how to tell if you like someone. I think this can be a great strategy if you're either trying to figure out how other people experience attraction differently from you or if you don't experience attraction and trying to figure out how, um, how that feels for people. And just in general, the sort of stereotypes even or expectations, I guess stereotypes maybe is a bad word, but it does convey this sense of like things that people expect to see if a character or a person is attracted to somebody else. So I did this experiment and this is what came up. And one thing I noticed here is that either Google or this website or somebody has decided that liking somebody is the same as actually being in love. So I guess that just tells you a little something about what people will assume, what readers will assume when they see attraction in your, in your book between two characters. So the second set of conventions that I want to talk about is expressing love through actions. And this goes for both actual love and attraction. And so I thought I'd put in uh, a special note here, but you know, the phrase willing to die for someone because you love them so much is a bit of a cliche, but it actually has some grain of truth to it in that you're willing to go above and beyond for that person. And even if, you as a writer are not so comfortable conveying the more internal sort of wishy-washy aspects of attraction or love, you can still convey how much somebody loves and cares about another character through what they're willing to do for them. So with The Fire on High, it's you know not one of those speculative fiction books where the person would die for someone or fight dragons for them or like fight a, a whole armada of starships. But you can see this sort of expressing love through action in realistic contemporary books as well. So, you know, maybe giving up something that you really care about, really want to do for the other person, um, or not forcing them to give up something, even if it means that your relationship might have to change. And then the third 
sort of set of conventions is how you set up your love interest because I think if you set up a character from the very first page that you introduce them in the right way then readers will already be looking for a romance between them and someone else and you you'll hardly have to do any work so with in with the fire on high this takes the form of lines like this not me I'm not interested in a Malachi Malacant or a Mala nothing as a reader you're like yeah sure you're not right but this kind of introduction, paying attention to how this character comes off to readers from the first page is going to do a lot of the legwork for you when it comes to establishing a relationship between them and someone else later. Another example is sort of heavily describing the, the love interest's physical characteristics and mannerisms, especially, I guess, their eyes, their mouth, um, their voice, their body, um, or even describing something like how good they are at something that they're doing. And then also I think it's expected for the character to pay a lot of attention to moments of casual physical contact or eye contact early on in their introduction. In With the Fire on High, that looks something like this. He's found a seat by the sunlit window and is tapping a pencil on his desk looking straight at me. When I catch his eye, he smiles shyly but keeps on staring. I look away from him with a sharp cut of my eyes. So here you get both this moment of eye contact, which creates a lot of tension, and the main character's reaction to it. And I think these things are both setting up the way that she feels about the love interest, Malachi, and also setting readers' expectations so that they know, oh, this is gonna be the love interest. There's already this tension between the two characters. Because if it doesn't come out of nowhere, if you use these conventions of uh, introducing the love interest character, then readers will already be looking for it and that'll make your life a lot easier. And this does, bring me to another point, which is, I guess, unfortunate but true, is that these sorts of conventions of introducing characters work a lot better if it's between characters of different genders, and that's just, you know, how it is at this point, is that readers, or I'll say many readers, are going to assume attraction between uh, characters of different genders much more frequently than they will between characters of the same gender, and, you know, I won't get into it right now because that's a whole nother kettle of fish, but just something to be aware of is that if you're establishing a relationship, a, ro a romance between characters of the same gender, you might have to work a little harder to set people's expectations for that. So the next thing I want to talk about is physical intimacy, and this can be a little bit tricky if you've never been in a relationship or had experience with it before. Um, but I think, again, there are some tricks and conventions that you can kind of use if you want to include this as an aspect of romance in your own writing. And the first thing I want to say is that you're in luck if you're writing YA because it's okay to mostly have moments of intimacy quote-unquote off screen and not to be too explicit or go too in-depth about physical intimacy between characters. And okay, so you're saying, okay, well, that's all very well, but maybe I want them to kiss or something. And if you don't have any experience with that, it can be kind of tricky. But there are some strategies, and I think particularly you can get away with not going into too much detail, because this is YA, um, not going into too much detail, but rather focusing on the emotions, the ways that it makes the character feel. And then you should also look at depictions in books that you've read and sort of mirror them and practice writing these sorts of scenes and see what works and what doesn't and what level of detail you're comfortable writing. And don't forget that these moments of intimacy can be sort of a mix between physical touch and dialogue and feelings as well. And if you sort of bring those all together, excuse me, if you sort of bring those all together within one scene, then not only will the scene feel more fleshed out and not just like you're reading smut, but it'll also help you to sort of fill out the words and make this feel like a very substantial scene, even if you don't go into a lot of detail, a lot of physical details. And the other thing to remember, of course, is that it's okay if it's sort of awkward and the characters don't really know what they're doing because it's YA. And if you're writing YA, your characters are young, it's plausible that they've never done any of this stuff before either. And so they can be a little confused and a little weird about it. One thing that I think is important to remember is that physical intimacy is not just about kissing or sex, but also things like holding hands or snuggling with each other or even just sharing these really small moments of casual contact that nonetheless convey a really deep sense of familiarity. And I think some of those things can be easier to capture sometimes if you don't have experience with a relationship or with romance. And they can convey just as much care between the characters if you, you know, use them purposefully and sort of intermingle them even in the characters' everyday actions. And you don't necessarily have to write about them having sex. 
So aside from making use of these conventions of romance in YA, I think another really important thing to do is to use what you have, use what you have experienced, and sort of repurpose it when you're writing romance. So in other words, like taking elements of your own experience, even if they don't come from a romantic relationship, and putting them into a romance. And I, I think I do this a lot because even though I haven't been a lo in love, for example, I have experienced attraction towards another person, and so that can help me with describing that first step of attraction and sort of filling in the gaps between those conventions with some details from my own personal experience, even though that doesn't help me when it comes to, you know, actual love later on. And another example is that I, I feel really fulfilled by friends who I can sort of share a comfortable silence with, um, like snuggle with them on the couch and watch TV, um, even like call them on the phone without it feeling awkward. That's a big one. Um, but sort of these this sense of emotional closeness and familiarity, and even though I don't romantically love those people, I can bring those elements into depictions of romance in my own books and make the emotional connection between characters feel a little more authentic. Overall, I guess, like I've always found the advice to write what you know to be a little bit misleading and not that helpful, and I think this is an example where you can sort of complicate that adage and just use what you know to write what you don't know. And now this last part, I guess I sort of mentioned it before, um, but something I think is really, really important if you're trying to do this kind of thing, write about romance if you haven't been in love, is to read a lot of books and also consume other media where there is romance and really pay detailed attention to how that's portrayed in those books. So for example, how did they develop the overall plot arc? Like, what's the sort of pacing of emotional and physical development between the characters? Like, what kind of language do they use to describe both emotional and physical elements of romance? And how can you mirror that and obviously put your own spin on it, but again, paying attention to what those conventions and expectations are and how that actually looks in a real book. Because I, again, I think the thing is, if you can leverage readers' expectations for what a romance will look like, it just makes your job a lot easier. And then once you've gotten the hang of these conventions and expectations, you can start to play around with them a little bit, um, change things up and see what works for you. And also maybe what isn't working and what other readers, potentially people who have been in love, say, you know, that doesn't, that doesn't feel right. The good news is that romance in books is not real. Oftentimes it's not even realistic. And so you can get away with writing things that maybe wouldn't happen in real life, but could be really cute or really exciting. Uh, or really new in a book. So even if what you're writing is not realistic, if readers enjoy it, you're golden, you're set. And as with all things in writing, I think, it just takes practice. Definitely early on I was intimidated to include any kind of romance in my books because I thought, you know, I've never experienced this in real life, like I don't know how it feels, I don't want to mess something up, or like even worse, accidentally write a really harmful or even abusive relationship without knowing it um, and without knowing how things would actually feel. Um, but I think by essentially doing this research of reading other books, I gained a lot more confidence and was able to slowly start incorporating elements of that into my own writing. And finally, I think it's so important to say that you don't need to write romance in your books, even if you're writing YA. This video is more for folks who want to include it, but maybe aren't sure where to get started. And ironically, like, even though I'm making this video, I never would have thought I was going to make this video. Um, but now that I'm making this video, I think it's a little ironic looking back that I probably avoid writing romance in my books just as much as I try to put it in, because I think that there's such a hole in the market for YA books where romance isn't considered an important part of the plot. And whenever I do decide to add a romantic element, I always try to think to myself, what's the reason that I'm adding this? How is this adding to the character development or even the plot? And making sure that I'm not just putting it in for the sake of putting it in. So that's it for my thoughts on how to write romance if you've never been in love. I hope it was helpful. I just wanted to share some things that I found as someone who's been writing for a number of years but has never been in love. Whether or not you have been in love, I'd love to hear some of your strategies for writing romance, some of your favorite depictions of romance in books, uh, YA or otherwise. And definitely your thoughts about how this might apply outside of YA, because I don't know as much about writing for an adult audience, and I'd love to hear whether you think that this still applies or if it's different in adult books. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I'm hoping to post more videos about sort of the craft of writing and things that I've learned, as well as 
specific, you know, what I learned about writing from a certain book. So stay tuned for that. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.